wish everyone knew about malignant hyperthermia. Presented by Malignant Hyperthermia Association of the United States. Copyright 2010. I'm here to find out more information about MH to find out if I'm actually susceptible to it. I had an episode in the hospital after surgery. It was an outpatient procedure and I ended up being in the hospital for seven days, left, and never found out what the episode was. So I was trying to get more information today. Crystal of Kansas. I wish they knew everything about it. I can't tell you how frustrating it is to walk into a medical facility and try to explain what MH is and have the medical professional look at you, treat you like you're another mother that overreacts. So as it turned out, one of the patients that I had tested in the 1970s uh, for malignant hyperthermia was a woman uh, whose name was Sue Ellen Gallimore. And the reason she came for testing was that her first cousin had died from malignant hyperthermia a few years earlier. And what she experienced when she needed to go and have some surgery for herself was uh, a wall of ignorance, basically. People didn't know about the syndrome. They thought she couldn't have any anesthesia of any kind. They didn't want to take care of her. And until she got the care she needed, it was a big runaround. Penny of Newcastle. The simple dental surgery procedure was supposed to take five minutes in a discovery of a rare reaction and wham! The doctors simply did not know what to do and packed her in ice. They accused us of holding back information we were supposed to know about. We had no idea. She survived, but it was traumatic. We had a daughter who died of MH, we believe, in 1975. But at that time, it was questionable as to what the definite cause was, but the anesthesiologist felt that it was MH. And of course, there was no antidote. So um, we have since then asked that all of our family use safe anesthesia. And um, you know, with, we've been fine. But through the association, I think, has really helped giving us, supplying us with information. And I have sent my dentists and doctors to their website when I knew I was having surgery before it was well recognized. So malignant hyperthermia is a genetic condition that when a person is given certain types of anesthetics, their body reacts in a certain way. Um, they can have an elevation in body temperature, their muscles contract, um, they start sweating, um, breathing fast, and if it's not recognized, then they can die from this reaction. Um, so there is a medication you can give a patient if you recognize that they're having an MH reaction, which will hopefully stop that event and potentially save their lives. Jane of Massachusetts. I wish my husband's primary care doctor had a basic understanding of my hereditary disorders. He called to say my husband only has one copy of the gene. And since you need two, he had nothing to worry about. However, this is not true. With an autosomal dominant disorder like MH, it only takes one mutation on one of these genes to cause MH susceptibility. It's very difficult to know who's susceptible to malignant hyperthermia. A person can have 20 episodes of being given anesthesia, never have a reaction, and on the 21st one, they have a reaction. So it's very difficult to predict. And even when we take a family history, um, if they say, oh, my mother's had lots and lots of surgeries, you know, that doesn't always tell us that she's not susceptible. Luli of Argentina. I wish everybody to know about MH. I think that this topic, uh, malignant hyperthermia in general, has been part of the, not, the medical base that anesthesia providers have to learn about now for several decades. So they may think from reading the textbooks and going to lectures in their basic training that they know everything they need to know about malignant hyperthermia. But actually being involved in an episode is a very challenging event. 
So M House supports the hotline, which is a very, very important part of what it does, because that hotline for malignant hyperthermia calls is always available, hopefully. There's a number of individuals backing up if the first person that's called isn't there to help guide the clinician through an acute episode and also the immediate care of the patient afterwards and potential diagnostic steps after that. I would have to that. tell other nurses that while malignant hyperthermia is a very rare disease, it does indeed happen. And we are practicing in an area where we have to be the first in line to recognize the symptoms of the disease, and it's very important to have that knowledge and to keep it at the forefront of your mind. Jody of Iowa. My daughter's anesthesiologist said he never experienced a case of MH until my daughter. We were internally grateful that he had the training, knew what to do, and did it quickly. M House has been probably the single greatest um, pusher for this type of education. I think they've done more than any, any other organization or anybody else has in educating people. When I speak to people on the hotline, most people are very familiar with the existence of M House, and most people have gotten educational material from M House. Uh, an example of that would be a uh, poster that M House produces and is hung in most operating rooms in the country saying what to do in an MH crisis. And it's everywhere you go. To learn more about malignant hyperthermia, contact MHAUS. We are a website at www.mhaus.org, or you can reach us at our toll-free number, 1-800-986-4287.